Welcome to another webinar from ColorLogic and CrossX Color about high-end color management. This time it's about spot color conversion. My name is Dietmar Fuchs, I'm the product manager from ColorLogic. Before we look into this topic uh, about spot color conversion, make sure that you have a look on our YouTube channel where we have um, recorded all our previous webinars uh, starting from optimizing measurement data, creating profiles and using those profiles in our color server Zebra. This webinar we will use our color server Zebra especially for spot color conversion but we will not cover all the basics on, on Zebra. Those have been covered in one of our previous webinars and you'll find the link to this YouTube channel in, in this slide. So today we want to talk about spot colors and typically if you have a document, as example here, spot colors, but finally you want to print this document in CMYK on your press. So that means you have to convert this, uh, all those spot colors to CMYK. And typically you can do this with a lot of tools. Uh, Acrobat Professional has a tool to do this and other, other tools have this as well. And mostly this is a very simple kind of conversion which gives you not the desired results. And why this is, I would like to explain a little bit in this example here, um, because it has a lot to do with, in a PDF, a spot color is defined. Um, typically, each spot color has a so-called alternate color space. Um, if you use tools like in Focus Spit Stop, for example, you can click uh, with the pipette functionality, functionality on each of uh, the spot colors, and you'll see how the alternate color space is defined. In this example, created from newer versions of InDesign and Illustrator, um, you'll see that the alternate color space is an LAB value. So for example, this dirty lab orange, 100% has a certain LAB value, and this LAB value is then used if you do a conversion from spot color to CMYK. Former versions of InDesign or Illustrator, versions before CS6, create a CMYK alternate color space. Now, so that means uh, a certain spot color will have a CMYK alternate color space value, which um, we all know uh, CMYK is print related and output related. So it would mean that this CMYK is targeted to one specific output condition, for example, coated paper. But if you use, would use the same alternate color, color value CMYK values for an uncoated paper, you would get a wrong conversion. So using LAB values instead is a much better choice. So using new versions of InDesign and Illustrator, for example, to create PDF documents with spot colors, with Pantone spot colors, for example, has a better potential for correct output. However, you will see um, in the next slide that introducing this LAB color space will produce other issues which are even more severe in uh, printing um, environments, which is not good. And to avoid those problems, we would like to propose another workflow by using our color server Zebra. And um, we are using spectral color libraries to do the conversion from spot colors. Obviously not only using LAB or spectral values is the key there, but as well the conversion methods, the mathematics behind to do the conversion. Because if a spot color overprints another spot color or process ink, you have, to good, you have to do a good simulation of how the interaction of those inks are doing. So you have to have a spectral module to do this kind of conversion, which goes much beyond those simple methods that you'll find in a normal way of, of conversion, conversion of uh, spot colors to process colors. So this slide is an example what can happen if you use InDesign, for example, to create a, a PDF document with a certain spot color, for example, Pantone Cool Gray. I've uh, noted the LAB value of that spot color here, so it's 36 O minus one. And if you put this into a PDF, you would use the alternate color space to convert it to CMYK. For example, using Acrobat's tool uh, Color Convert to convert spot colors to CMYK. And at the end, you'll end up with a certain CMYK values. And here I've um, noted down the CMYK values. You'll see it uses all four CMYK inks. And if you do the calculation, for example, this is done for ISO-coded V2, 
you'll see that um, this CMYK values would give you a delta E2000 of 2.9, which is a very bad match, basically. And, which is even worse, um, the colors are using, uh, we are using four inks then to simulate this uh, spot color. And using four inks will create a lot of issues in printing. For example, if that spot color has been placed on top of another process ink, for example cyan, and put on an overprint, it won't overprint anymore because it's using cyan in the conversion. Or if you're using uh, a gradient from white to your spot color and if it's converted to CMYK, it would use all the four inks. And it's very likely that you'll end up with uh, some uh, color shifts in, in, your gray, in, in your gradient. And that's definitely not what you want. If you use the conversion with Zebra, we would ignore the alternate color space and do the conversion based on our spectral color module. And then we get much better predictable result. Better in terms of delta E accuracy. 0.6 is much, much better than 2.9, obviously. And we can get to this result by just using 49% of black. And this is much better printable because at the end you don't have any overprint issues. And if your gray um, gradient from white to your full tone is only using black, it's obviously that you don't have these color shifts at the end. So using this way of conversion, you get to a much, much better result. We are using Zebra for the color conversion. And Zebra is our flexible color management engine to do the conversion of PDF and pixel files. And in one of the previous webinars, I've explained how to set this up. And the most advanced functionality is definitely using device link profiles to avoid all the traditional ICC color management breaks that you can have, like uh, black is for color at the end and pure colors get contaminated and such. You can avoid this by using our device link profiles in our color server so that you get the best conversions of PDF files. This time it's about a quality spot color conversion and we want to look into this into more detail in, to, in our technical webinar. For those that are not familiar with our products, this slide is just a short overview about all our main tools. We're starting um, optimizing measurement data before we create profiles with our tool color end. Then we create uh, optimized uh, printer profiles and device link profiles with our Copra color profiling application. Or if you're working according to international printing standards, you can use our predefined and pre-calculated standard device link profiles including tech and safe ink profiles um, that you can use in any ICC aware application or you can use them as well in our color server Zebra um, to get to the best conversion.